Hello! This episode is a double engine feature. Yep, it's time to get my collection of swanky components fitted. The body works on hold while I wait for some new bits to show up. That's a good time to get the motor back together, really. The last time we saw this sorry little crank, I was lamenting its loss. But now you know what top end is being fitted, it's going to be very obvious this crank just won't be happy in the motor. Here's its replacement, a BGM 60x110 full circle item. From the Yamaha Comrod and the Honda Race big end bearings to the large GP bearing surfaces, you just know this is going to be way more suitable. It comes as part of a kit containing packing plates to make up for the extra 2mm throw and three different thickness mag flange gaskets to get the fit right. First order of the day is to lap the flywheel onto the taper. The flywheel you see here is a 12 volt BGM item and you're going to hear more about that later on. The whole lapping process is really quite unremarkable, but what I took the most time with was a thorough cleaning off of all the paste. I really could do without that getting into the moving parts. Satisfied I thoroughly cleaned it all off, it's time to get assembling things. Now I've already mentioned that I'm going to be using the later GP crank bearing setup, so let's get fitting some. First part to be fitted is this inner bearing race for the MB Race Saw flywheel bearing, which should have needed a little heat to help it on, and maybe it got a bit too hot as it fell straight on. Well, I suppose it means no danger of bashing a balanced set of crank webs about. Now let's get the drive bearing in. With a little smear of grease to help all things slip in, I place the bearing in. Now it's time to use the best engine tool purchase I've made, and that's this brilliant BGM bearing press kit. You're going to see it used a lot. With the aid of this cool tool I can be sure the bearing is going in straight and all the way. With that in it's now time for a bit of belt and braces action by fitting this MB Halite gasket over the top of the shield already pressed into the bearing. Well you can never be too sure. With that finally in, I can fix a whole lot into the case with this steel drive plate from MB. With the knowledge its design means there should be no fanning of the crank webs. Thankfully this uses high tensile allen screws making tightening them up a piece of piss. Now time for my bit of belt and braces action, along with a dab of Loctite on the screws, I'm also going to stamp them in place. Like I said, you can never be too sure. Now time for the flywheel bearing, and after a little smear of grease, I can fit a small MB Viton mag flange seal with my fingers, and then tamp at home with this handy nylon punch made for this very application. Now that's in, it's time to fit the rest of the flywheel bearing. The only lubrication this poor little bearing will ever get is what I put in now, so I pack in as much as is sensible. As this is a GP bearing setup, there's no need for the mag housing spacer, so it's straight in with a large MB Vital mag flange seal. After getting that seated the same way as its little brother, I can secure it all in place with a new circlip and try and get a little bit more grease into the bearing. Now to get the crank in. After a quick smear of grease and some two stroke oil squirted into the big end bearing to help it out on its initial start up, I can finally offer the crank into the engine case. And using yet another handy little tool from MB, I can make sure the crank is pulled through all the way and firmly fitted. Now, this might look a bit Mickey Mouse, but here's my Pikey Conrod holding tool. Two rubber bands. So what you like, bleeding works for me.
With it all nice and tight, I'm going to take it off so I can pop the case on its side and whiz the barrel studs in. After sliding the supply packer on, I attach the piston, minus rings. I can now check the skirts of the piston will not come slamming down into the ball face. Remember, this is an entirely new build and I still have no idea if everything's going to fit, let alone work. Bleeding wants to, cost enough. Happy everything looks good, the top end is stripped off and I'm going to start fitting the mag flange studs with a dab of Loctite. I'm going to keep shtim about these studs as I replace them later in the build because I just wasn't happy about their length. And lo and behold when I got their replacements from MB they really were too short but well there we go, they're due for now. And now it's the first time I break out the Hylomar Hylosil Instant Gasket. And my god do I get through a few tubes of this stuff during the entire build. Getting a good bead of this stuff onto the gasket face, I then take a gamble about which thickness mag flange gasket to use. I went with the 1mm. Then it's another bead and finally on with the mag flange. Slowly pushing it down with the fittings and a final torque up. It turned out my mag flange gasket gamble paid off and the crank fits in lovely and I've ended up with this rather handsome looking pair of cases. Yes, the two engine halves are back together again. It looks like they might even work. Eventually. Moving on, I now need to get rid of these original barrel studs and get these extended high tensile cylinder studs from MB in place. I'm going to fix these in with some red Loctite. The next stage is setting up the squish clearance. First I need to know which thickness of packing plate I'm going to need. As you can see I got busy on the internet looking for various thicknesses. But what turned into an issue was finding a packing plate with enough material left to fit the RB porting configuration. Most of these plates will be manufactured to fit the mighty TS1 port pattern, which is different and would mean some nasty jumps for the gases flowing through the ports. For now, let's just carry on using the supply packer, which I knew wasn't going to be thick enough, as the ball face on this casing has been milled down, but what I didn't know was by how much. So after sliding the barrel and 1mm head gasket on, time to fit the head with the electrical solder in place with some blue tack. The gap we need for my setup is 1.5mm and as you can see from the effort needed to turn this over, it was going to be quite a bit less. Getting the whole lot apart again, you can see it's a good 0.7mm under one side and 0.3mm under on the other. So, time to change the packing plate. Now I'm sure there's different ways to carry out this process, I'm just following the comprehensive guide by Mike Broadhurst on the MB site and as I mentioned at the very beginning, this is not a tutorial. The 4.4mm packer should give the correct clearance I need, and going through the whole process again, you can see much better figures. 
I speeded the whole thing again, but I added a 0.5mm packer to the setup to give myself some peace of mind. Now I've settled on my main packer, it's time to make it look not quite so industrial. I don't want this moat to look like some Frankenstein creation. So using one of the supply packers as a guide, I reshaped the 4.4mm one and gently finished it on some wet and dry on a mirror to remove any edges. Time to look at the flywheel again, and here you can see the sorry looking original 6 volt item, and here's a 12 volt upgrade one from BGM. The reason for getting this out again is to mark the top dead centre position on the mag flange. The top end setup is radically different from the original, so there's no way the TDC position will be the same. Refitting the barrel with its packing plates and inserting the Woodruff key into the crankshaft, I now firmly attach the flywheel. This is a handy dandy little tool I'm going to use on the piston so I can find the exact point at which the piston stops or at the top of its cycle. The tool simply bolted in the place of the head. Then slowly turning the motor over, I can watch the dial to find the piston's apex. I turn the motor over a few more times to be sure of my readings. One of the cool features of the BGM flywheel is the timing marks etched onto the flywheel's edge and now using a blade and a marker I can accurately leave a mark in the mag flange at the new TDC position. With that taken care of I can now set about fitting the top end. First task is slipping the piston rings on. Now I'll admit to not checking the ring gap but this is all brand new stuff which wasn't cheap and you'd like to think all the tolerances are spot on. With them on the gudgeon pin slid in and secured in place with the supplied circlips. Again the little limb bearings have been smothered in two stroke oil. The new cylinder is now gently pushed on, making sure the rings contract nicely and plenty of oil is added to help things along. I have a feeling there's going to be a fair bit of smoke when this puppy fires up for the first time. Now methodically applying the instant gasket, I can set about resting the barrel into its final position. After that sticky, messy little job, on goes the head gasket, then the head itself, and it's all equally tightened down. Now for the reed valves. First a little smear of grease on the gasket, and a quick check to make sure all the reed petal retaining screws are tight. Happy with that, I pinch the petals into place and then plug the gasket on. Then on with the manifold. I dab a lock tight on the securing bolts, get them screwed in and then torque down gets the manifold locked in place. Look at this, I made this, I'm well proud of it. It's my homemade leak down test kit. So, I wind in the exhaust manifold studs and apply a little temporary bead of instant gasket just to seal up the exhaust port while carrying out the test. With that attached and the home brew bung shoved into the inlet manifold, I carry out my first quick test. And, well, I don't really need to say anything more here. Okay, test two, and immediately we got quite a leak. It turns out to be the head gasket. 
So pulling off the head, I tried to get the stamping process edges off the gasket with my wet and dry mirror sanding technique, but it turns out to be bleeding awkward. So it's onto the internet and a quick check of Mark Broadhurst's barrel fitting guide. I learned a cheeky little trick of using high temperature Loctite as a head gasket seal. Genius! So with a very thin smear down in place, I carefully run through the head tightening process again. It's time for leak down test number two. And yet more leaking, only this time you're not going to believe what it is. Yes, I've got air escaping through the stud holes. Now you lucky buggers won't have to sit through the whole bleed and strip down and build up process all over again. And all you get to see is the final talking down and the third test being started. By jingo, I think we've got it. Leaving the whole thing pumped up for 10 minutes, I'm losing one PSI. I can live with that. Hmm, finally I'm starting to see an engine coming together. Without bleeding time. See you later.